Hey everyone. Now, I haven't talked about TNA in a while, and you know, a lot of people are saying that since they've been on pop, the ratings have become back and forth, like sometimes good, if not a majority of the time it's been okay, and sometimes they've gone back to what they had on Destination America. But overall, they have said that the quality seems to be getting better. And one person commented uh, that it seems that they're doing what they basically what needs to be done to creating stars all over. But where there's good, there's bad. And for anybody that's been paying attention to TNA, these are spoilers. But it seems that TNA is still trying to desperately they're trying to make themselves different, but in a sense, they're also trying to make themselves similar to the WWE. Hear me out. Okay? First of all, one of the big things coming out of TNA is you got this feud going on, this rivalry, this feud between Maria and Gail Kim. Maria Canellis and Gail Kim. Now, basically, what it seems to be is they're trying to position Maria as the face of the knockouts division or at least in the storyline standpoint make her the face of the knockouts division without even doing anything to earn that position now some might say well brian if you've read the recent spoilers over the past few for the next few weeks she's kind of done that not particularly you see she barely from what i understand now, I could be wrong in the next few weeks, and I hope I am, but it seems from a storyline standpoint, what they're trying to do is make Maria's character do less than she needs to and get more out of it. Basically, do nothing but get something out of it. A good example of this, and I'm going, and this is a bit of a spoiler, um... Maria was giving, Maria was named number one contender. She had somehow, somehow won a match where she became the number one contender to Gail Kim's knockout title. Now, apparently, Maria didn't want to get in the ring with Gail and is not, I guess it's been indicated she's not much of an in-ring competitor. And she gave her number one contendership, her title shot, up to one of the dollhouse. One of the members of the dollhouse, which happened to be Jade. Now, obviously, this seems like they're bringing the dollhouse to an end, finally. Like, okay, there's no beautiful people to feud with, so let's just end the dollhouse and be done with it. Or well, at least that's what it looks like. So, basically, long story short, Jade, in a triple threat match, won the Knockouts title. Now, that's great and everything for her to be the Women's World Champion of the second biggest promotion in, in, Amer in North America, in the eyes of some people. But then here's where this whole TNA, some things change but some things stay the same deal, uh, comes into play. Now, some might say it's original, and some might say it's just stupid. Basically, long story short, Jade wins the title and spoilers on a future episode of Impact, she ends up in the ring with Maria, her and the rest of the dollhouse. And Maria tells her, give me the title. In other words, hand the title over to her. Basically, from storyline perspective, when Maria gave up her number one contendership, her title shot, from a storyline perspective, in her mind, she pretty much gave the title shot to one of the dollhouse, but from her perspective, it was for them to win the title for her. In other words, she wanted to become champion 
without having to work for it. Now, with that said, fast forward a few weeks later, about a week or two later, and she ends up winning a ladder match set up by Billy Corgan to determine the new head leader of the knockouts division. And her first goal, and obviously this should have been established when her and Mike Bennett first arrived, is to turn the knockouts division on its ear. In other words, reestablish the knockouts division with will women and not wrestlers. <laughs> yeah, you heard that right. And if you don't believe me, Google TNA spoilers for March 19th, March 12th, and you'll see exactly what I'm talking about. You will. But, uh, yeah. Pretty much, Maria, as we speak right now, even though it's not been seen yet on Pop, as we speak right now, is the head of the knockouts division. She calls the shots. Now, one part of this storyline is Gail. Obviously, we're gonna obviously for those that don't want to read spoilers or listen to spoilers. For those that don't know. Gail Kim, the only reason she didn't win the ladder match was she was taken out by DK and Rose Marie of DK. But then, follow that up with possibly the next week's segment, the, the, a segment for the following week, of her accusing Maria of being in cahoots with the DK to make sure she wasn't involved in the match anymore. Now, obviously, if... TNA is as predictable as we think they're going to be, thus saying that sometimes things change but they stay the same. This is going to become just like what Grado and Eli Drake. There's going to be video evidence shown of Maria making a deal with Decay. I've got this feeling. I've got this feeling that's what's going to happen. And Maria is going to get unseated as the head of the knockouts division. I mean, pretty much what it seems to me what they're doing with her and Mike Bennett is basically playing them up as a couple, a real life couple that in storyline don't really, really want to do much to gain anything in this business or in this company. That basically they want everything handed to them. Like basically... Storyline wise, Mike Bennett feels he should be world champion. Give me title. Thank you. I am world champion now. Maria, same thing with the knockouts title. Obviously, you can see that they're setting this up for possibly Maria and Mike to get the comeuppance at Slammiversary. Because I can already tell a lot of people reading the spoilers or listening to spoilers, not just for me, but from anybody else, that. They're not happy with the idea of Maria wanting to turn the knockouts division into a division of will women and not wrestler. It's like you're just basically trying to turn your knockouts division into the divas division of WWE. That's what you're trying to do. That's how many people will look at it. And... Again, we pretty much could see it's being set up where she's going to get her comeuppance. And who knows where they're going to go with that. But speaking of, sometimes things change, but they stay the same and being predictable. How about this? We knew a match between Matt and Jeff was going to happen, and it did. And if you've read any of the news sites recently in the past 24 hours... Apparently, either in story or legitimately, Matt was stretchered out of his I Quit match with his brother after Jeff performed a swanton bomb off the top of the staircase at Studio 20 in the Impact Zone. So he was stretchered off 
in a stretcher with a neck brace and everything. Now, again, we don't know if that's in story, an in story injury or a legit injury. We won't find out till later. But again, being TNA and sometimes things change, but they stay the same and predictable. Pretty much what I figured, in my opinion, was going to happen, happened. Jeff Hardy, apparently in a segment for the following week, for the week after, comes out, basically says he's always going, no matter what happens, he's always going to be Jeff Hardy. This brings out, well, basically he comes out and says he hopefully, that basically he swanton bombs some sense into his brother. Hope, I don't know if he say hopefully when, when this airs or what, I don't know. But basically, according to the spoilers I read at WrestleZone.com, he basically, he basically says he swantoned some sense into his brother. This, and that no matter what, he's always going to be Jeff Hardy. This brings out Rockstar Spud and Revy Sky. And they accuse him for what he did to, to Matt. And pretty much what I thought, just think reading spoilers and watching a little bit of impact here and there, and even watching some of the highlights on the YouTube channel, pretty much what I felt was going to happen and be, re, be acknowledged happened and was acknowledged. And that was basically... Jeff Hardy, or someone, in this case Jeff Hardy, accusing Rebby Sky of manipulating Matt's mind, basically messing with his mind, which in turn, in my opinion, is going to basically lead to the revelation that Matt's change in character, his desire to make his brand bigger than the TNA brand, thus maybe overtaking it, taking over TNA, if you will, is all Rebby Sky's idea. And I won't be surprised that in the future, upcoming weeks, with more spoilers and stuff being revealed, uh, being talked about, and more results being spoiled, that pretty much it's going to be revealed that the reason Rebby Sky could not get work anywhere else, and that the only reason she was brought into TNA was because she's Matt, Matt's wife, and I guess it was a favor to Matt, and like I say, she's his wife. But in storyline, they're probably going to acknowledge the reason she was never um, hired by anybody else is because of her attitude and because basically she's power hungry. She doesn't care about anybody but herself. So I I'm guessing. I'm not saying that's what's going to happen. I'm, I'm guessing, but I wouldn't be surprised if that's what gets revealed, that basically... Matt's changing character was all Rebby's idea, and it has all been about Rebby and nobody else. So, but that's just my video on some things T in TNA change. But my video, basically, that's my video on TNA and how some things change but stay the same and predictable. Let me know what you guys think down below. I'll talk to y'all later.